And now, see, because it's not on the table, you can do this, and it won't. Oh. It won't shake it. Ready? Yeah. All right. Welcome back, everybody. A summer edition of the, the SBO video series is starting. And true story. Uh, we tried to film this outside. We tried to be outside this weekend and do a bunch of filming. And um, if you're not familiar with what's going on in the Midwest, there's something called Brood X. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's just the, the massive cicada hatch. And it, it's just ruining our audio quality. And it's loud. These freaking cicadas. And it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's it's crappy backpacking season here. So um, we got some fun Talking Heads videos today. We are uh, in the in the process of actually getting ready for our first um, of two big trips this summer, going out to Colorado. So we'll be ha- we'll be doing a five day trip out there. That's pretty legit. That yeah. little Colorado trail trip just kind of snuck up on us. Yeah, and it's turning into something decent too. Yeah, like a legit trip. But yeah. today we're talking about gear, things, items. Some of the things I have aren't things you'd think of that you should always bring. Yep. Um, at least in most situations. Yeah. But first. Yeah. You need to you need to rate us on iTunes, especially if you're the listening podcast. to our podcast. Yes. Yeah. And, w- and listen to the podcast. Yeah. Obviously, listen to the po- podcast and subscribe to the Backcountry BSing channel. Um, and uh, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel, and then we go live a lot, and we don't announce it. So hit that bell icon. We so do, that- we do do that, and people complain about that. Like, just hit the bell. Just hit the bell. You um, know. We also have merch. Yeah, you can check I'm that out. Right. Yep. Um, I think is that all all the plugs? <laughs> yeah, I think that's all the plugs. Okay, so gear. I some of these are like kind of items, but everything you take is kind of classified as gear. So yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about. But we're talking about things that you should always bring. Yeah. Um, for the most part, some of these there might be situation dependent, mm-hmm. but um, things you might not think of that you need to bring, um, but that can really be a, a good a good efficient thing to bring so the first item i have and, and when andy and i plan for these videos like he doesn't know what i'm gonna say and, and <laughs> he's got gonna hold this okay all right first thing that you should always bring is i call them a kroger bag yeah that's a good one okay I, I don't know where you where your grocery shop but like a grocery store plastic bag or two of them. The reason being, A, in the winter, or if you're good anywhere and your feet get wet, you can do what's called bread bagging your feet with it. We use them as trash bags. We use them, I I'll, I line my food bag with it sometimes so my food bag doesn't get nasty, but just like, they cost zero dollars, grocery store plastic bags. Yeah. they yeah. all. I always bring at least one. Yeah, or like j- just some type of extra like, Extra bag. bag. Yeah. yeah. Put, you know, you can, uh, you can pick up trash with it, store your wet stuff, all sorts of fun stuff. That's a good one. Yeah. Y- you want to go? Yeah. My next one. So I'm going to, what I'm going to say is going to be very obvious to you, but I have an interesting reason why. Okay. So I'm going to say you always want to have a spare lighter with you. Ooh, that's a good one. And that's a good one. N- Everyone out there is going to say, well, yeah, you know, you you know, if you're lighting a fire, you know, you always want to have two sources to start a fire for emergencies, that type of thing. And that is true. But I'm thinking of it from a different angle. Like when the first one gets wet and it doesn't work. (laughs) That or I, you know, like when you're all sitting around a campfire and like one guy's got a lighter (laughs) and like everybody's like, hey, man, can I bum your lighter to start my stove? (laughs) It's just like carry carry a spare lighter, and that lighter always gets lost. And yeah, the so, one that gets passed around. Yes, of course you should have uh, spare, you know, means of making fire. You should, and, and like we've been using the same little bic lighters for years and years and years, and like mine's finally starting to go out. And like I remember pulling it out, and I was like, it wouldn't even spark. And I was like, oh okay, it's time. Yeah. So I grabbed another. I head. I carry three lighters (laughs) (laughs) i only carry two um but that's a good one next item that you should always carry now if you have this might depend on on what your water filtration things are but you should always bring and i always see people not having was you bring a water scoop yeah that's a good one yeah bring a water scoop it makes now if you have one of those cnoc although i don't think they make those anymore i think they do Anyway, the, 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 they, they do make some water filter bags that zip open or like you can open them from the top and scoop in the water that way. Uh, we've never had success with those. They've always broken. We'd stick to the regular water bags. And I cannot tell you how many people I see trying to get water in those bags. Yeah, just it's like, like, just really going like this. Yeah. You want to scoop. Just, you, it, you just take a, a, take an old water, uh, old, 
like water bottle, not a water bottle, but like a, a disposal, just, just cut it in half, put it in your kit. It weighs nothing. It costs zero dollars. Bring a water scoop. You know what else is bonus about the water scoop is if you cut it so that the cap is still on the bottom, you've got a spare cap then. For well, one of my items was I always, always, always bring spare water caps, smart yep. water caps. Um, yeah. That can be, if you lose the caps to the, what you're carrying water in, that's a problem. <laughs> and those things, like the clear ones, especially, you can lose them. Yeah. Um, but if you, I mean, the nice thing is, is that you carry the water scoop, you've got a spare cap. I know, but I carry I know. A spare caps yeah, in my idea. kit too. And one more thing before you go here, anyway. well, while we're on the topic of water, always, if you're using a Sawyer product or any sort of water filter that has an O-ring, always 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 bring a spare o-ring um we use the sawyer squeeze so like i keep the o-ring from one of my old ones and it goes in my little first aid kit with this spare smart water bottle, water bottle caps and the third lighter <laughs> <laughs> um just those if the if the o-ring goes or you lose the o-ring they can fall out really easily if your water filter especially if it's upside down uh it, the water filter won't create a seal and won't work so always bring a spare filter O-ring. And, that, and that's a real problem. Like that has happened like the to me where the O-rings start to get loose. Yeah. And uh, they'll like pop out or sit on the top of your water bottle. And you could also kind of go a little bit further with this. And you, you can say that you should always bring a secondary source of water purification. Now, I'm always with Andy or all these other people. So we do not carry multiple things. Um, but if you're by yourself, you should definitely have... Like, I don't know, some Aquamira or, or maybe like an iodine tablet or two or something just in case your filter goes. Um, now, like I said, we're always with other people. So and, and we, we we are now to the point where we make everybody carry a filter. Yep. Everybody carries a filter. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. But you should always have a secondary water source. Yep. So uh, next one for me is that if you are re relying on electronics for navigation, you should you should carry a spare battery pack. Charger. That's a good one. Yeah. I didn't have that in mind. Yeah, and and um, I'm only caveating that like if you're relying on it because I know there's plenty of people that like you know are carrying paper maps and stuff and that's cool. But if like if you have a reliance on your phone or a GPS unit or something for yeah. your navigation, you need to have a spare battery pack for it just in case. And they're so cheap and they're yeah. so light now. Um, like we ha we I have both an Anchor 1000 or an Anchor 10,000 and an Anchor 20,000. But yeah, we are we are to the point now where nine times out of ten we're using our phone for gps and navigation um so just that alone means we should carry an extra battery and then you know it's nice to have a phone that's charged like you yeah. know just like it's nice when your phone doesn't die so that's it that's a good one what, yeah. what else you got all right next one seems kind of obvious but uh maybe someday we'll do a video about this but i'm gonna say this is maybe this kind of like goes off of an item we previously said but uh, stuff to repair gear and i'm gonna call Ooh, that is a good one i'm gonna call out two specific items and both of them are multi-use, of course. So I'm going to say Luco tape as one for not only can you repair gear and stuff, it's really good tape, but also for blisters and gener and first aid too. It, it, it does a great job of like holding stuff in place. And then tenacious tape as well. That's a good one. And gorilla, and you could throw a gorilla tape in there. You could throw a gorilla or duct tape. tape. Or I think tenacious tape is like, it's kind of like a, a master of everything. Um, and then we also carry some like Cuban fiber repair strips as well. You used, used to carry a thread and a needle. Yeah, I used to carry a thread I've and a needle. I've carried that before. Yeah. But tape, tape, tape can, can does it all. Tape does it uh, all. I, I, so if, if you, in my personal opinion, if you had to pick like two kinds of tape, one would be Luco tape and the other one would be tenacious tape. And, yeah, and that would be that would cover pretty much everything that we've ever encountered. That's a good uh, good thought though. Gear repair items. Next item, I think, and we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but I think I'm gonna say this: if you're solo backpacking, you should be carrying an SOS device. I think so. Yeah, especially like, but if you're at like a well, local place, right? It, it, the caveat is if you're going somewhere where you know you can get to cell service, or you know you're going to have cell service. Uh, that's that's fair you don't need to but especially like if you have kids or you're married and stuff i mean just you know what do you want to do with your wife bitching at you well just get the sos device they're they're getting cheaper they're getting lighter there's a lot more competition out there as yeah well, so it used to be just garmin inreach was the only thing you could get but now there's like spot or something. zolio or bivy stick or like all these there's a ton of them and it's just worth 
I mean, you can get one for what one or two hundred bucks, and then you know, it probably costs like fifteen bucks a month to activate it when you need to use it, and it's worth that. Only if you're going solo do I say you should always carry something like that, or be in an area where you know you're gonna get cell service because it's just it's worth it's worth one to two hundred dollars to mitigate your chance of dying, even if it's like point zero 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 one percent. But peace of mind, and then people can track you and stuff. That's more for solo. Um, so that's that's something I think you should always be carrying. It's just a responsible thing to do, I think. Yeah, think about like five years down the road, that'll be built into phones. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Actually, true story, uh, my Garmin watch now can sync to my inReach if I have them, and I can activate the SOS for my watch. Nice. So like if I get pinned behind a rock or something and I don't like can't actually access the inReach, I can hit it from here. Yeah, as you're being mauled by a bear. Yeah, I'd be like, hit the watch, hit the watch. <laughs> okay, last thing, because uh, I know you got some more stuff, but uh, while we're kind of on the topic, this is kind of a, a conversation, but any sort of emergency gear um, is something you need to carry. Now, I don't know, we could send a whole, we should do a whole video on emergency First gear. aid kits. Yeah, um, I, w- I was thinking, yeah, more like um, like a whistle or a bell or just like emergency style gear, like a, maybe like something you can use to like signal people with. Or I, I don't know. I, I just thought emergency gear is probably something you should always carry. Yeah. So I mean, first aid kits and ways to signal is is right. Important. I can't think about anything other than that. Yeah. That would be an emergency gear. Or like, I'm, I, I don't know. Right. It's it's there's that's such a big John. I know we need to just do a whole video on it. Uh, all right. Well, that's all I had. I know you got more stuff. Yeah. I only do one more though. And this one kind of, um, I think people take this one for granted and you've seen videos, uh, on uh, us talking about this before. I'm surprised by how many people don't want, don't use like dry bags or waterproof bags or something or pack liners in their packs. That's a, you should always be doing that. Yeah. And like, <laughs> you know, with the Dyneema packs or the X-Pack packs, you know, sometimes people get in the habit of just stuffing your stuff in there. And, and you know, sometimes when it's like, when it's 90 degrees out right now, if your stuff were to get soaked, at least you wouldn't die at night, maybe right now, depending. You'd be fine. You would just be not be fun. It'd not be fun. But, uh, you know, like they weigh nothing for pack liners like almost yeah the nothing. pack liner is there's no reason you shouldn't be yeah. lining your pack yeah yeah they weigh nothing and um yeah some of the roll top dry bags there can be a little pricey but there are ways to get cheaper waterproofing and just just do it because the one time that you're not gonna do it you're gonna you know you'll get the big thunderstorm your stuff will all get wet yeah. and it'll be miserable and we've andy and i have both been in situations where we've been either with people or with our it's happened to us where stuff in our bag is wetted out like in sub 35 degrees and that yeah. that's just not fun yeah even it's dangerous even, yeah it's also not i mean fun. i always use a pack liner and then um sometimes i i might also throw my insulation in dry bags too that's so. smart that's smart yeah that was a good roundup. There's yep. some good tips in there. Yeah. Bring the bread bags. Bring the extra O-ring for your filter. Um, there's some good little nuggets in there, I yeah. think. Yeah. So I think that's it. I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, you know, sorry for all the Talking Heads videos. You know, we have been going out. We're not necessarily filming some of our overnights we do yeah. to random spots in you Ohio. All, you all get bored with them. Just because we have like multiple videos at like every every spot in Ohio. So um, we're going out and filming. Like I said, we went out this weekend. You just could not with the freaking Brood X. You could not hear anything. So, but don't worry. Um, next month we'll be in Colorado. The month after that we'll be out in Lake Tahoe. So we'll have some epic backpacking, some cool trip videos. Yep. I think that's it. Yep. See you later. Bye-bye.